The Harpreet Singh Show today, this episode, which you all have heard, is Hardik Swagat. Today, this community profile segment, which we will talk about, is the Delta Police Commissioner Neil Dubard. What kind of things have they done? What 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 have they done? You know, you are, of course, uh, you know, are now the Delta Police Chief. Yes. But of course, you haven't reached this pinnacle of success immediately. It's been a long time. When did you join the police force and what prompted you to join the police force? I joined way back in 1987. Mm -hmm. So I was a member of the Edmonton Police Force. Okay. And I joined uh, as a 23-year-old kid. Mm -hmm. And I had always wanted to be a police officer. It mm -hmm. is something I had always wanted to do. I had always wanted to help people and feel like I was making a difference. Right. So I joined way back in 1987 and spent 25 years with the Edmonton Police Service. Mm -hmm. Wow. And uh, again, as you said, you always wanted to be a police officer. Was there some inspiration behind it or was it from a family tradition? What was it? That's a great question. I had a neighbor mm -hmm. that, who was an Edmonton police officer and I'd always seen him going to work and coming back w from work in his uniform mm -hmm. and bringing a police car home every once in a while. <laughs> and I always loved to be able to go over and see the police car. Right. His name was Bob Robertson, okay. a wonderful man. Mm -hmm. So after 25 years in Edmonton police, then you moved over to uh, Vancouver? I did, so I was uh, headhunted, or I, I would, the search firm called me about the Metro Vancouver Transit Police right. Chief job, mm -hmm. and I applied for that particular job and was successful and, and came over and was the chief at the Transit Police. How much time did you spend over there? So I spent, I was hired on February 1st in 2012, and mm -hmm. I spent right through until last July. Right. July 1st, I, I ended up moving to the Delta Police, so about three and a half years. Wonderful. So the different experiences, let's start with your policing career starting as a, uh, you know, a, an, an officer and spending 25 years in Edmonton. Uh, what kind of experiences you had over there when we compare it now with this place? Well, Canada is changing demographically also things are changing now. But overall, what has been your experience being in the service? You know, Edmonton is actually very similar to Delta. Mm -hmm. So those two communities are very similar, very strong community very strong citizens that want to be engaged in actually helping the police. Right. So when I was in Edmonton, I was lucky enough to be able to walk the beat in what they called the Neighborhood Foot Patrol Project. Mm -hmm. It was a chance to really be able to engage and be partners with the community of Edmonton. Right. And now back in Delta, of course, we believe very, very strongly in community policing mm -hmm. and no call too small. So that's very similar, in right. fact, yes. But I've had many experiences. I've, I've had a very blessed career. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And uh, when we talk about having a blessed career, being a police officer is a daunting job, you know. Uh, many times in quotes, a thankless job also where mm -hmm. people's expectations are too high. Despite doing the best, many times still you cannot, you know, kind of uh, convince the people that you have done your best. Yes. Has it ever come to your mind while in this service that I've done the best, but still, you know, uh, people are, or, 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 the, or the governments that are, do not give that much of credit. As a police officer, what kind of feeling a police officer has when he is on duty? You know, you bring up a very good point. In, in my whole entire career, I, I bet you I haven't had five bad days. <laughs> so I've been very fortunate. But right. some of the things that are frustrating are things when you believe that you, you've made a good arrest mm -hmm. and someone's done something very bad and then the courts potentially let them off on a technicality. Right. That's always very frustrating when mm -hmm. you think you're doing the best for the community and then all of a sudden the courts let this person go in their back on the street right. faster than you've done the paperwork. Mm -hmm. So that's a frustrating piece. Right. And as a police officer, what do you feel with the changing demographics, with the changing system all over the world? Uh, the Canadian legal system, does it need to work on that aspect also that as you very rightly said, the best is done, the culprit is caught, but again, he or she is off the hooks. So that creates uh, a kind of uh, thinking in the police officer's mind that despite the best I'm doing, the results are not as should be. So not just as a police officer, but being the head also now of the police force, of course, especially amongst the youngsters, this kind of feeling must be prevailing quite high. So how do you try to, you know, uh, first of all, two questions. W what do you think about it? And secondly, if that kind of thinking exists, you as a senior police officer, how do you interact with your colleagues and subordinates and how do you try to you know, tell them that yes, something will be done or is being done? 
You're right, and you're right. Those types of frustrations do exist. Mm -hmm. You know, certainly the legal system. Uh, you know, whether it's be the legalization of marijuana, mm -hmm. or it's the you know the relaxation of current and existing laws, or the failure to have uh, the legal authority to do certain things, is frustrating sometimes. Mm -hmm. When you know people are getting away with something that's just not right. Right. The best way for our young officers to be keep them engaged is, is to get them sort of removed and say that you do the best job you can mm -hmm. to be able to serve the community in the best way you can, and then you can't be r responsible for the outcome. Whatever the outcome is, you, you can't get involved because you have no control over That's that. That's right. Just accept it. Yes. So you try and let it go. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wonderful. We'll go for a short break. We'll come back and continue with the discussion. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. So, when we talked about the fact that Mr. Neil Dubar said that he worked for 25 years in Edmonton Police, he worked for the Metro Link, which was the Translink, he worked for the Translink, he worked for the Police, so he worked for the Delta. As a police officer, he inspired by his childhood, and his neighbor's son, he was a police officer, and he was always in his mind, that when he took the car back, he could also take the car back. He was a great career, and he was always blessed that I was a police officer, and I was always doing a police officer, and I was always doing a police officer. I asked myself that many times I have seen that a police officer has a lot of effort to study a culprit, but the legal system has been removed from the legal system. So, what do you understand? Yes, it is frustrating. Sometimes the person has been frustrated that it is done. But this is the subordinates that do your best, and the rest of 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 the rest. Let's go back and go back to the rest of the rest. वैनकूवर विच मरीन ड्राइव ते स्थित रियल कनेडियन सुपर स्टोर ओहो वन स्टॉप खरीदारी दा हल है जिथे तानु वैरायटी वैल्यू ते हर किस्म दी साउथ एशियन स्पेशलिटीज वाजिब कीमता ते मिलदियां हन साफ सुथरीयां हाई क्वालिटी ताजी सब्जियां फल बेकरी डेयरी रेगुलर ते भारतीय ग्रोसरी इथे उपलब्ध है आओ ते आके इको थां तो कर दी लोड दी हर एक चीज ले जाओ और जानकारी ले कॉल करो 6043223727 वी केयर टू ऑल योर एथनिक नीड्स थैंक यू फॉर शॉपिंग एट सुपर स्टोर on Marine Drive. Once again, welcome back to the program. My name is Mr. Neil Dubar, who is the Delta Police. Before the break, we have talked about some of the things that we have learned in our lives, and especially for our youngsters, who are going to go to the police force, who are going to go to the police force, who are going to go to the police force. So before the break, like you were talking about yourself as a long-time police officer, you must have had lots of experiences and lots of achievements. If there is one thing of which you are proud of, what would that be? I remember one case very specifically, mm -hmm. and it was about 2 o'clock in the morning, and we received a call of someone breaking into homes. So we responded down to this area, and it was really dark and cold out at night. It was in Edmonton, mm -hmm. and we had the opportunity to be able to see someone that was running through these apartments. So I remember getting out and running after the person, actually catching them, mm -hmm. and I caught them with a series of keys. And what they had done is they had stolen a caretaker's keys from an, a series of apartment buildings mm -hmm. and gone in and committed several sexual assaults to the women that were inside the apartment building. Mm -hmm. So uh, that particular investigation I remember very clearly because there were three or four victims and over the, the course of that particular evening we were able to identify all those victims, arrest mm -hmm. this, this person right. and see him go to jail. Wonderful. Any regrets? No regrets. Wonderful. It is the best police, uh, policing is the best job available and I mm -hmm. would encourage any one of your listeners that is interested to call me personally and I'll talk to them about the Delta Police. Wonderful. We'll talk about that also. A little bit about your family. Uh, yes. Who else is uh, living with you? So I, I'm married. I've mm -hmm. been married for 32 years to the same uh, wonderful wife, mm -hmm. Lorraine is her name, and we have no children. So mm -hmm. uh, I, my dad is still alive and I respect my dad so much, 95 years old. Wow. Every night he Skypes me. Right. He gets mad if I'm 10 minutes late for a <laughs> Skype, he's mad at me. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. So that's wonderful. What inspires you to do what you do? You know what really is rewarding is to see the satisfaction I get from being able to work with the community. Right. I think when you're in public service, you, mm -hmm. you really look forward to being able to provide, uh, you, you know, your job is responsible to being able to assist people. Right. And I really get my reward from that. So that spirit of service is the one which motivates you to do what you do. Absolutely. Right. Coming back now to the Delta Police, it's yes. been over a year now you have been the police chief over there yes. and Delta Police is considered to be one of the best police forces in the country. Yes. Uh, for the common person, if you could just let us know, sometimes we hear the RCMP or you know Edmonton Police. Many people don't know that while there is one place we are saying RCMP and then there is another police which has been governed 
by the municipal corporation as such. So why is this difference is there and is there any difference between your uh, duties also or virtually they are the same but you are being uh, managed by uh, someone else? You're right. So our duties as police officers are exactly the same. Right. However, the management is quite different mm -hmm. of it. So I report to a police board that is actually responsible to the municipality of Delta. Okay. So as a result, I, uh, there's a lev level of governance and that police board is made up of community citizens. Okay. So I'm reporting directly to the community by reporting to this police board and I'm responsible to them. Mm -hmm. And they hire and fire me. So if, if I'm not doing my job, there's right. only one neck to choke and it's mine. <laughs> That's right. So that, that will be the one. So there's direct <coughs> accountability right to the community and to the municipality. Right. Well, the RCMP is a federal police service mm -hmm. that is contracted by the municipality to do the work. Right. So although they, they employ the police service, mm -hmm. their employee really isn't the chief. Right. You know, the, 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 the chief works for the RCMP and is employed by the RCMP and then it's just a contract service. Oh, right. Okay. So it, it's quite different. Okay. But if you also want to go into the RCMP or vice versa, RCMP wants to come to a local uh, district, can that be done? So all the qualifications are the same. Right. So we could transfer from the RC from the RCMP to Delta, from Delta to the RCMP, mm -hmm. because the qualifications are the same. Right. But there's two separate employers. Right. My employer is the Delta uh, That's Municipal right. Service, mm -hmm. and the other one is the federal government. Right. Okay. And as far as Delta is concerned. What are kind of challenges you are facing with it? Because as I said, Delta Police is considered to be one of the best police uh, forces in the country. And uh, there is, as compared to other cities, near, in even neighboring cities, the crime is less. And then, as you said, no call is unimportant and every call is looked into. Yes. So uh, being in this uh, place for over a year, what are you finding? What are the challenges? Absolutely. And, and we are lucky. The Delta Police Department is a, is a really, really good police department mm -hmm. and we are very proud of our model of community policing and our connection with the citizens. Mm -hmm. However, there are challenges within any municipality and ours is Delta continues to grow. In Tawasin, we see a large mall happening and, right. and that will bring all kinds of new commuters to our highways and traffic concerns mm -hmm. and potentially property crime concerns. Right. In addition, Delta is a really unique community in that it, it, I call it the little city with big risks. <laughs> and what I mean by that is that you have the ports, right. you have the ferry, you have the border, you have an airport, you have an LNG plant, mm -hmm. you have an industrial area, you have the, the ocean, of course, and the, all the water concerns. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of separate risks in this small little city that you would see only in a big city. Right, so what you mean to say is that uh, over the years, as uh, Delta will progress, more people will come. Do you feel that there will be less police force to uh, you know, monitor this all and you'll be requiring more infrastructure and more police forces? Definitely I see the Delta Police mm -hmm. Department growing. I think with the, the new bridge coming in to replace the Massey Tunnel, right. you'll see more and more people coming to Delta and it will really open it up to the whole Metro Vancouver area mm -hmm. once that new bridge is in place. Right. So I do see it. We're very lucky. The Corporation of Delta invests well in their police department and we're well funded and well policed. Mm -hmm. And I hope to be able to continue with that ratio right. as we move forward and there's new challenges. Right. And apart from this, presently, are there any uh, hindrances or any challenges what you face which need to be looked into? You know, currently we're mm. facing the, the new South Fraser Perimeter Road mm. is bringing in all kinds of new clients into the neighborhoods of Tawasin and Ladner. Right. People that didn't normally come there now come there because they, you get on the South Fraser Perimeter Road and before you know it, you're in Tawasin or Ladner. Right. So we're seeing kinds of people that we haven't seen before that mm -hmm. uh, are undesirable and, and potentially looking at property crime. Right. I, as far as Surrey is concerned, you know, the major issue, especially amongst the youngsters, is uh, drug use, which is quite uh, a matter of concern for the parents. What about Delta? Is that also a major concern over there? In North Delta, we mm -hmm. do have some problems with drug use. Fentanyl right. is very popular now, and we mm -hmm. see some fentanyl overdoses. Right. I think that, you know, we, we have uh, in Delta Police Department, we have what's called a vulnerable person section, which has a youth section. Okay. And we work very, very hard to make sure that those children are getting the kind of support they need to stay away from addictions, both alcohol and drugs. Mm -hmm. As you talked initially also that uh, you are responsible to the community. Uh, when we talk about the community as such, there are a lot of expectations from the police which are asked from the police officer. What about the community as such? What would be your, uh, you know, not advice I would say, or what would be your suggestion? How can they also become more involved so that they also become partners in stopping the crime? 
it, you nailed. That's the secret to mm -hmm. any successful community is being able to have engaged citizens right. that want to work in partnership with the police. Mm -hmm. And you know, it starts with something as simple as getting to know your neighbors. Right. Getting to, just knocking on your neighbor's door and saying, mm -hmm. "Hey, when I'm away, can you watch out for me? And when you're uh, you're away, I'll watch out for you." Right. That's at the very simplest level how it can happen. Mm -hmm. But also getting to know who is your neighborhood patrol officer mm -hmm. and making sure you're familiar with who that is and and that you have a relationship with that patrol right. officer. And uh, are efforts made by the Delta Police to reach to the people through some forums or some meetings? There is. So we have everything from coffee with the cops right through to town hall meetings. Mm -hmm. And we try to use social media <coughs> a lot. Right. So we'll use Twitter, we'll use Facebook to really connect with some of the youth because we know that certainly we don't reach them through our, um, I should speak about my age. Right. Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, there are a lot of youngsters who look up to you or to the police officers that they also want to come into this field. Uh, to make a good you know, s a recipe, you ought to put right ingredients in it. So to be a good police officer, what would be your recommendation, especially to our youngsters who want to come into this field? The first thing is we always recommend is make good decisions. Right. You have an opportunity as a youngster to make really good decisions, and it's hard sometimes because your friends may not always be making good decisions. So that's the first step, is, mm -hmm. is make sure you make good decisions. The second piece is I think communication skills are so important. So get into some kind of job where you're developing communication skills. Mm -hmm. Sometimes some of the best police officers we have come from the service industry. Right. They've worked in restaurants, they've mm -hmm. worked in, in some other service industry, and they've learned how to communicate with customers. Because mm -hmm. policing is all about communicating with our customers. Right. And as Mr. Duber, demographically also Canada is changing. Mm -hmm. We find that uh, many times there are some issues from the countries uh, where immigrants are migrating here. In their countries, the police image is something different. Here, the work of the police is something different. So also, is it being uh, you know, seen into this aspect that more visible minorities are also in the police forces so that there can be better interaction between those people? Absolutely. We would like to recruit to reflect the demographics of our community. Right. And our, the demographics of Delta are changing dramatically. Mm -hmm. And I can talk a little bit about w in relation to other cultures not accepting the police. So mm -hmm. recently in Ladner, we've accepted two Syrian families. Right. And those Syrian families have, have nine children between the two of them. Mm -hmm. The first thing we did as police officers was to go and meet those families, explain how to use 911, right. and that the police were their friends and to be there to help them should they right. need that. Mm -hmm. The very next day we saw th those two families when w one of our police officers were in the uh, coffee shop and they came in and gave that police officer a big hug. Right. And that's exactly the kind of relationship we need. Right. And uh, towards the end, uh, when Neil Dubur is not working as a police officer, how do you spend your time? You know what, I like reading. Okay. I'm an avid reader, so mm -hmm. I'm trying to read as much as I can. And I don't get as much time as I used to, mm -hmm. but I sure love to read. And then it, w when I'm not reading, I like to go for a run or do something outside. Wow, that's really great. It was an honor to have you today on the show. Thank you very much. And uh, we would love to have you know special programs where Delta Police can come over here and any information which needs to be disseminated to the people can be used through this medium. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. It's been an honor. Pleasure having you. So, I just want to talk Mr. Deal Nubar, who is the head of Delta Police. He said that as a police officer, he can do whatever he can do. He can do whatever he can do. Delta Police, which is a very important thing to do, which is a very important thing to do, which is a very important thing to do, which is a very important thing to do. I asked for RCMP, Delta Police, or Edmonton Police, which is a very important thing to do. So, I said that this is directly responsible for whatever it is, which is a Delta City. जबकि आर सी एम पी ऑफिसर्स जोड़े है वो एक फैडरल जो एजेंसी है उसमें जवाब दे होंगे ने पर इन्हों का यही कहना है कि जोड़े नौजवान साढ़े इस फोर्स में आना चाहते हैं डिसिपलिन हार्डवर्क उस तो अलावा कम्यूनीकेशन स्किल्स और होर जो स्किल्स ने जरूर होने चाहिए हैं डेल्टा पुलिस की कामयाबी का राज यही है कि लोगों रल के ये मसलों सुलझाते हैं तो इन्होंने कहा कि जेकर कोई डेल्टा जो रहा उसकी कोई तकलीफ हो सीधा संपर्क किया जा सकता है